Hi everyone, we are gonna talk about the coiling technique today. Uh, coiling is really good for any complex curves. So if I wanna do things that are more complicated. Uh, I'm gonna show you two versions, thick coil and thin coil. Thin is more decorative, but much more time consuming. Thick coil is an easier way of getting the same approach quickly. So I'm gonna pretend that this shape is pretty much what I see down here. And I wanna do something more like a neck up at the top. Okay, so first thing you do when you're making coils is you have to roll them out. So you wanna do this on canvas or a surface that is not very porous. You can take a chunk of clay, okay? And I start with just kind of smushing it into a long kind of hot dog type shape. Our goal is to make it an even consistent coil. So this is for thin coil that are more decorative. So I'm just running my hand along it. Sometimes I'll even put my hands together and do it together. Now, if you're doing it and you notice it's going thud, 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 what that means is it kind of became uneven. So this side is longer than this side. So if at any point that happens, you can just kind of press it a few times, make it square, and that kind of starts it over again as you do more of a decorative coil. I'm trying to be consistent with the thickness. So if you notice places it's thinner, you wanna try and avoid those and focus on the areas that are a little thicker. So same thing happened, so I'm just gonna square it out. Now with decorative coil, your goal is to make it look pretty beautiful and consistent. So once I get to this point, I like my coil, I like to take a sponge and smooth over it. That does two things, it cleans up the shape and it also adds a little more moisture. So then when I'm bending the clay, it doesn't crack as much. I don't have a sponge in front of me, but just imagine what you would do with a damp sponge. All right, let's go back to my form here. If I'm planning on coiling a part that comes up, a neck and an opening, what I would wanna do first is plan where it's gonna sit. So maybe finding the center and I would cut out a hole here, okay? So cutting out this whole center. Then I'm planning where I'm gonna put the coils on the outside. So let's say I'm starting here, planning it out, putting these on. Before I get any further with my coiling process, I need to slip and score into the part that I already have. So imagine I cut this area out. Now I'd slip and score around, slip and score the bottom of this coil too, and then I would place the first one on. So with coil, you have a couple choices. Some people like the look of the coils shown on the outside. That's why it's kind of more decoration. You can totally keep that, but that means that you have to slip and score in between each one or you have to go to this interior area and while it's soft enough, you have to smooth them together. So basically making it seem like there are no coils when you look on the inside. If you try to do this when the clay is harder, it will not work. So it's something that needs to be done when the clay is soft enough so that you can smooth it. Okay, so now when you look inside there, you don't see any of the coils, but when you look on the outside, you see the coils, okay? The other beautiful thing what you can do with coil is you can make your curves kind of shift into different shapes. What I mean by that is you can have them come in and then go out again. So if this was a beautiful, gorgeous coil that I took my time with, if I want the form to get smaller, I can place my coils more on the inside, right? And so slowly getting smaller and smaller. If I wanted it to get bigger, I place them more on the outside, okay? And it's just a way to change that curve. Obviously not my best coil, but you get the idea of how you do the thin coil decorative technique. Slight difference if you're doing thick coils. In this case, the whole point is to leave your coils a little bit thicker. So I'm just kind of getting some clay started. Uh, I'm gonna roll it a little bit. And once I get about, uh, you know, an inch, inch and a half thick, what you can do is just hit it down. We only want our walls to ever be about a half inch thick. So what I'm doing is pressing it down. And now what you notice is I have a piece that's about a half inch thick, but it's a lot taller. So the benefit of this, if I bring my piece back, is that if I know I want a pretty straight neck coming up, I can start with this part, and I would probably go a little thinner than this, but for the sake of TV, we're gonna keep going with it. I can figure out how much of it I need, and then I can slip and score this part together, and look how quickly I was able to make that next part. 
Now I could go with another piece and go on top. And if you're not looking for the decorative part, you can smooth it together very quickly using a rib tool or your finger and even attaching it at the bottom. Just remember, you always have to slip and score, especially if your clay is harder and you're attaching softer clay to it. All right, so thin coil, more decorative, smaller detail, takes longer. Thick coil, you work a little bit thicker, a little bigger, but it does uh, add other details to the surface.